Hi, thank you for choosing to watch this Facebook Live. This is going to be about lust. Lust isn't something that I myself personally have, um, have spoken about before. Talking about lust isn't something that you would normally find yourself in conversation with, whether that is with your partner, whether you're married or not, or whether you're down at the pub with your friends, or whether you're, um, whether you're having a dinner party, you're very likely to have not spoken to anyone about lust. So I've shared in the description of this that what I'm going to be sharing on this video will be uncomfortable listening for quite a lot of people whether you're a man or a woman. Lust is a very real, very real, very powerful, very potentially damaging feeling that can cause lots of damage. So, I'll just share a few things. I've just searched for lust, like the meaning of lust on, on Google. So on Wikipedia, Lust is defined as immoral because its object or action of affection is improperly ordered according to natural law and or the appetite for the particular object, e.g. sexual desire, that is governing the person's intellect and will rather than the intellect and will governing the appetite of, for that object. So what is another meaning, another meaning, a definition of lust? Lust is defined as a strong desire for something or someone. An example of lust is a feeling of a guy, is the feeling a guy feels when he looks at an extremely attractive, it says here supermodel, but I think you could take that to, you could take supermodel out and for the example you could give the feeling a guy feels when he looks at an, an, an extremely attractive woman. So, more explanations of lust is a strong feeling of sexual desire. So an example was he was consumed by lust. He was motivated more by lust than love. So more by the desire for sex than by affection, satisfying their lusts. So we don't talk about lust. I've not previously really spoken, I don't think on a Facebook Live about lust, but in the UK, over this last 30 years, from what I've come to understand, divorce rates in the UK and I'm sure this will be replicable in most other Western civilized countries like America. In the UK, divorce rates, I think about 30 years ago, were around, were around I think one in four. 25% of marriages brought down. But then, then as it's gone on over the last 20, 30 years, it went to two in four, so like 50% of marriages 
end up breaking down and leading to divorce. And then now, from what I understand, I think from official statistics in the UK, it's almost 75%, it's about 70%. So you're talking nearly three quarters of marriage, marriages currently in the UK lead to divorce. One of the causes of a marriage breaking down is someone commits adultery. So, it seems like now, if you were to get married today, for instance, and there's people getting married every weekend, and I'm sure people are getting married over the festive period, whether or not it's a, a church wedding, or it's just a civil ceremony like what, like what I had back in 2005, people are getting married every, every weekend, every, every day across the world. When you stood, when you stood making your marriage vows with the, the love of your life, because you've chosen, in most cases anyway, to get married to that person. Obviously there's certain parts of the world where maybe the, um, maybe the woman hasn't herself personally chosen through falling in love with a man that she wants to get married. But on the most part, you would be stood at the altar getting married, saying your wedding vows with your, with your husband to be or your wife to be because you love them, because you met them in whichever way you met them that you fell in love, whether it was love at first sight or it was, it was over a longer period and that you presumably likely got engaged and then you decided to get married. So stood up on your wedding day of whatever, if you're watching this and you are married today or you have been married, if like me, you've been stood up on your wedding day and you are saying your wedding vows and you, you're on this most significant day of your life, the joining of two people, two people becoming one, the, you know, the significance, the significance, the, the, the what, what should be the life-changing significance of two people coming together um, and marrying. When, I know certainly when I was on, when I, on my, on my wedding day, I had no plans or no intention that the marriage would end up becoming part of the statistics of the divorce rates in the UK. But it ended up being. And I would say, <laughs> I would say pretty much everyone, and if, you, if you're married now, um, or you have been married in the past, that on your wedding day, the day that you're giving your vows, in your heart and in your mind, I don't think anyone would be planning to get divorced when you're on your wedding day. You're marrying that person because you've, you're in love with that person and they're in love with you. That, that should certainly be the, that should certainly be the, the <laughs> that should certainly be why people get married anyway. So you're not planning to you're not planning to be led astray. You're not planning to hurt your husband to be or your wife to be. You're not planning to, to cheat on them. So from people coming together and being married, why, why is it that in the UK it's now nearly 75%, nearly three in four marriages lead to divorce? What does lust have to do with this? Lust. Because lust is real. Lust is something that I have lived with and experienced during my long-term relationship that turned into an engagement that turned into a marriage I can speak from experience of the, the feeling of lust, the lust, lustful, having a lustful desire. 
So you're in a relationship, you're either boyfriend, girlfriend, you're engaged or you're married. And speaking from personal experience, and I'm speaking to, to the men that will be watching this now and the, the men that will watch this, and this will be uncomfortable. This may be uncomfortable for men and women. There is something, there is something inside humans that even though you're happily married and you're with your husband or your wife, there is something that leads men and women to look at whilst in a relationship, whether, in, whether married or not, there is something inside of us that leads our eyes to look at another man or woman, another, someone else from the opposite sex. And that lust, that, that attraction, that, that kind of physical, as it's explained in here, that it's lust is It's about where the desire, the desire is, is like a sexual desire. It's not a love. It's a sexual desire. So, I know from personal experience how real that kind of sexual desire is, how, how real lust is. And I am... Um, I'm encouraging everyone watching this to, to face into your own experiences of lust when, if you are in or you have been in a relationship, but you have lusted after someone else. Does that mean that you did anything with that? Does that mean that it went any further than just a lustful desire? No. In most cases, I would say, I wouldn't like to say potential, potential percentages, but in most cases, nothing actually happens. Nothing, nothing, nothing actually happens between you and that person that you are, that you are lusting over, that you, have, that you have looked at with like lustful eyes. So it doesn't mean to say that something actually needs to happen between you and that person, but you've still had that lustful desire. You've seen... You've seen someone, it's an, and it's an attractive person, and you've had this like attraction, this kind of this sexual desire to maybe to imagine them. We've all got an imagination to see someone and to imagine someone, for instance, with no clothes on. And where I'm going with this, and I, I just want, I just encourage everyone to just be, just have an open heart and mind when I'm sharing this, because this is very real. This isn't something I'm sharing things and I'm, I'm referencing myself and personal experiences and, and the battles I've had. And I'm just encouraging everyone to just, to look inside of yourself and to recognize maybe some of the things I'm saying of what you can recognize in yourself. So for instance, lust can lead can lead us whilst in a relationship to have lustful eyes for someone else, which can then manifest into sexual desires. And then that it can manifest into almost a, like a, a visual, like a visualization, like a fantasy with our imagination to imagining that person. So you've not, you've not done anything physical with that person you've not got together with them, you haven't cheated, you haven't physically cheated on your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, you haven't physically carried anything out, but inside of you, you have your lustful desire, your sexual desire for another person outside of your relationship can be very real. 
And then through that, through our, through imagination and through then visual manifestation, that can lead to fantasizing. And then, of course, everyone that's watching this, that will watch this, can you know what I mean when I say when you fantasize about another man or a woman, whether you are in a relationship or not. And through fantasy comes, of course, a, a desire, an internal desire to, to want to act on that desire. To act on that desire, in most cases, I would say, would be that you act on that desire personally and privately. But in some cases, in some cases, that desire inside, that lust, that sexual desire can lead someone to, uh, to commit adultery, to cheat on their boyfriend or their girlfriend or their husband or their wife or their fiancé because they physically act out the, the desire, the strength of that desire, that lustful desire, that sexual desire with someone else gets to a place where that person acts upon it and commits adultery. So, for instance, in their mind, they may try and justify that. They may try and justify their decision to cheat, to commit adultery, perhaps because the things in their relationship, it may not be a, a particularly healthy relationship, for instance, for any number of reasons. So that person who commits adultery may, may find that their mind is, is basically almost justifying the decision to cheat because of things that aren't going necessarily too well back at home, behind closed doors with their husband or their wife, boyfriend or their girlfriend. So then people's mind can then justify that it's, it's okay. No one will know. So I'm going to share from personal experience now. And I'm going, to, I'm going to share, first of all, from before I was saved by the grace of God, before I gave my life to Jesus, and therefore before I received the Holy Spirit, before I was baptised by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, which was two and a half years ago. So I'm going to go back first of all. So the old Paul, my old self, my old, my old self that was led by and influenced by my sin nature. We all have a sin nature. We are born with a sin nature. And our sin nature is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly powerful. Sin a sin nature this this internal in, internal power within us that can lead us to do things that we know are right our sin nature can lead us to say things that we know are right our sin nature can prevent us from doing what we know is the right thing to do our sin nature which we all have is incredibly incredibly powerful you will have experienced things in your life where you acted behaved a certain way and then after you acted or behaved a certain way you felt remorseful you knew you had done wrong and I'm sure at different times in your life you have apologized to that person for hurting them by your actions words behavior because you did something you didn't want to do after you did it, you felt a conviction in your heart and then you were led to say sorry to that person. But what you initially acted on was, was your sinful nature. You were following the dictates of your sin nature by doing something that is sin. You, you were sinning, you were hurting, you were going against God's laws. When we sin, when we're living in sin, 
the middle letter of sin is I, when we have our self at the centre of our life and not God. We have all sinned. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. We all have a sin nature. Sin lives within us. So you might be wondering at this point, well, what can we do? What can you do about your sin nature? Because maybe some of the things I've been sharing, you, you can feel a connection to because you know in your heart that you yourself have experienced that feeling of lust, that sexual desire over someone whilst you are in a relationship with someone, maybe now who, are, who you're in relationship with, whether you're engaged or married or you're just boyfriend, girlfriend, you're just in a, you're just in a, you're in a relationship. So for myself personally, I was, I was 11. I was, I was 11. It was, this was a year after I had been sexually abused without me knowing what was happening when I was 10. I, was, I think it was 11. I was 11 when I first began to fantasise, start puberty, which um, we've all... We've all experienced at whatever time, or whenever it whenever it started for you. And around that same time, about eleven years old, I discovered, or I got access to some adult porn magazines. So I was I was looking at adult porn. I was like eleven years old. So I was lost inside of me. This strong sexual desire started to manifest in my life when I was 11 years old through what I was seeing and through fantasizing. So I was 11 years old. Thirty years later, Almost 30 years later, me getting up to about 40 years old, I battled with lust, with my sinful nature. I had an addiction to adult porn. And I'm emphasising adult porn. And that desire, that lustful desire, was, was far more powerful than the kind of inner conviction that I shouldn't be looking at that kind of material. I didn't realise that it was my sinful nature that I was battling with. But the power of my sin nature, as I can explain about it now, was more powerful than my, what you might call, inner conviction to do the right thing and to not do that, to not have that kind of addiction. Porn is something that I'm expecting most, if not everyone watching this, probably more so men than women, pornographic content, images, videos, with the unbelievable volume of content available online, an increasing amount of content available online over this last 20 or 30 years, I'm expecting everyone has seen something pornographic, image, images, videos. What you have chosen to do with that content, with that material is of course, a completely personal private thing. But 
it is widely known and accepted that viewing porn is is a pandemic is a total pandemic in the world there's there's incredible numbers that i've seen previously about the 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 prev the 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 volume god bless you billy billy i just want to share at this point yeah god bless you for sharing what you've shared to to say that you struggle with lust it's we have got to i'm i'm encouraging every person everyone watching this to face into if there are things that influence your thoughts behavior actions whether you're in a relationship or not but particularly if you're in a relationship taking into account that here in the uk now almost three in four marriages end up lead to divorce currently there are obviously serious problems in society there are serious problems inside of people that lead people to do what they do that lead marriages and relationships to break down there's no there's no other way of putting it so billy that is that it's commendable it's commendable that you've just shared there that you struggle with lust it's it's a desire it's a passion it's a desire internal that is rooted in our sin nature and we all have a sin nature every person man woman we all have a sin nature this is so real so i've shared that for 30 years i wouldn't even i wouldn't even call it a battle i didn't realize it was a battle because my sin nature my my lust lustful desire and looking at pornographic content was it 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 became just like a not like i wouldn't see it as a battle i didn't i wasn't i wasn't really battling against it my my own you might say my own will my my personal will wasn't was was just was crushed by my sin nature so it wasn't it wasn't a battle i didn't really feel conviction i didn't really feel like i shouldn't have done that or why am i doing this or why can't i stop doing it it was it was kind of like a part of me from when i was 11 11 years old and it was and it was i need to emphasize this it was deeply it was deep it was completely personal and private it was it was personal and private it was never a a relationship thing it was it was private and i've shared this previously i've shared about this battle well again i've i've shared with sorry this i shared with this addiction that i had and it's rooted in my sin nature and lust and it started from when i was 11 years old So I've shared about me. I've shared openly about me. And I talked about this. I've been describing me before I gave my life to Jesus, June the 16th, 2019. From the day I gave my life to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I have not chosen to look at a pornographic image or a pornographic video the addiction that i had that i didn't necessarily realize it was an addiction it was just like a part of it was just it was just me god performed a miracle that what was a part of me for 30 years died the day i gave my life to jesus that addiction to looking at adult porn ended on the day i gave my life to jesus when we are born again when we give our life to jesus because we believe with all our heart that Jesus is the son of god that Jesus died on the cross at calvary for our sins 
because we have all sinned. We have all got a sin nature and we have all sinned. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. Believing that Jesus died on the cross for our sins so that our sins can be forgiven by our Father in heaven and believing that on the third day, God raised Jesus from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Believing in Jesus and in his, bur his death, his burial and his resurrection and choosing to receive with all our heart Jesus into our lives as our Lord and Saviour. We are baptised by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And when we are baptised, when we are born again by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit joins with our spirit. Because if you didn't know, we all have a spirit. Either a spirit man or a spirit woman. We all have a spirit. And our spirit is a vessel. It, it's, a, it's an open vessel. So until... I gave my life to Jesus two and a half years ago. My spirit, I didn't realise I had a spirit. We all have a spirit. I didn't realise that. Our spirit is a wide open vessel to be influenced by the God of this world, Satan. The father of lies, the great deceiver. The thief that comes to steal, kill and destroy. So if you think about, we all have a sin nature, which is incredibly powerful, that wants us to think sinful thoughts, that wants us to lust, that wants us to, to hurt other people, that wants us to, to lie, to do a white lie or to, to deceive, or that wants us, just like Satan wants us, to stay separated from being in relationship with Jesus, from having faith and belief in God. So you've got, you've got our sin nature, which is incredibly powerful and is opposed to God's laws, and you've got Satan, the God of this world, that influences our spirit and whispers to us and deceives us and encourages us and tempts us the tempter the deceiver satan the father of lies so i hope this is helping someone can you see the battle that we have individually personally before jesus before we receive jesus into our life as our lord and savior before we are filled with the Holy Spirit, which joins with our spirit, before that time, we are living with our spirit that is an open vessel to be influenced by the God of this world, Satan. And we are living with our sin nature, our sin nature that is within us. We are born with a sin nature. This, this explains why until you have surrendered to Jesus and received the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit then joins with our spirit to become one, and then it is, it is the power of the Holy Spirit working in us that crushes our sinful nature, our sinful desires. So we are no longer following the dictates of our sin nature. We are, be, we are following and being led by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, which is pure, which is true, which is about love, and it is only through the Holy Spirit that we can put to death our sinful nature and also the power of lust. So just like when on the day I gave my life to Jesus two and a half years ago and I received the Holy Spirit, I could no longer go onto my phone or a device and go onto the website that I used to go on to look at what I used to look on. I just couldn't do it because the Holy Spirit was 
was now with me, with, had joined with my spirit. And the conviction comes from the Holy Spirit, the conviction to not do what your sinful nature wants you to do because of the power of your sin nature. It is only the power of the Holy Spirit within us because of our faith in Jesus Christ of Nazareth as our Lord and Saviour that can, that can crush our sin nature and our lustful desires. Before Jesus, everyone watching, if you're watching this and you haven't yet received Jesus in your life, you are battling. You, you are battling with probably something you didn't, you didn't realise you were battling with. You are battling with your sin nature. And you are battling, or what is influencing you are the influences and the words and the whispers of the God of this world, Satan, the thief that comes to steal, kill and destroy. The thief that wants to see marriages break down. The thief that will whisper to us and encourage us to cheat, that will encourage us to do what we don't want to do. And so we've, known, we've got our sin nature. We've got Satan, the father of lies, the great deceiver, whispering to us to encourage us to sin. And whether that, whether that manifests in terms of people cheating on their partner, cheating on their husband, their wife, their boyfriend, their girlfriend, or the deceiver, the father of lies and our sin nature, if that leads us to, to just hurt our husband or our wife or our partner by saying things to them, by treating them in a certain way, by treating them negatively, by getting angry towards them, by reacting to them, whatever that can lead to arguments, that can lead to tears, that can lead to a breakdown of a relationship. This is a very real battle that men and women around the world are battling with without realising it. But there's lots of people out there who will be in a marriage, happily married, who, who are living in sin, following the dictates of their sin nature, but they're happily married, they've maybe got children, and I know a lot of people like this in, in my life that are married, children, Men and women, but if I think about men first, I've got a lot of men, a lot of friends in my life, going back from, from my school years all the way up to people more in this last year or two. Every single one of us, every single one of them has a sin nature. Every single one of them will have lustful, lustful desires. Does that mean that they have acted on those desires in, in the physical sense in terms of cheating on, their, cheating on their wife or their girlfriend? Not necessarily. But in some cases, they will have done. Will their lustful desire have meant that they have had visualizations and manifestations and and fantasized about someone that is outside of their marriage, outside of their relationship? I very much expect so. Does that mean that it's currently affecting their relationship with their wife, their girlfriend? Potentially not, but potentially. Because when you are... When you are fantasising, when you are living... When, when part of your life, or just little pockets of your life, is, is living in a fantasy land, because of the lust in you, the lustful desires, that isn't healthy for anyone. But... For me, for 30 years, I didn't realise how unhealthy it was. It was just like a part of me. And I believe there'll be people watching this that perhaps struggle with the same kind of addiction that I struggled with. This is real life. This is, this is living life, experiencing life and these powers that are at work within us that we don't want, we don't want to do. We don't, we want to, we want to. Our pure self wants us. God, God's desire for us is to live a pure, clean life and to not, as it says in the Bible, because of what the Bible says, Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 28, Jesus said, But I say, anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. 
this is deep. This is deep. And, and I can imagine there'll be people around the world, men, that are aware of... that are that are aware of 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 sin they're they're aware, they're aware of lust they'll be aware of what Jesus said in verse 28 so they'll be aware of it but because they are battling without them realizing it with their sin nature and with lustful desires the very thought of them facing into that or to to believe in the bible because because what this is what this what this says this is conviction. This is conviction. And, and I believe there may be people watching this or that will watch this, that you've been convicted that if you are lusting after other people and you're in a relationship, and from what Jesus is saying here, that anyone who even looks at a woman and with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart, this is sin. And what our father is doing right now, and I believe he'll be doing this for some people watching it, this will be convicting you of your sin, but have no fear because through a personal relationship with Jesus, through surrendering your life to Jesus, through recognising that you are a sinner, through recognising that you can't win that battle on your own, that, that battle with our sin nature, that battle with lustful desires, that battle with your mind. If you're watching this and you've been battling with your mind in any way, with, with thoughts of anxiety, of fear, of paranoia, of guilt, of shame, of condemnation, of anger, of bitterness, of rage, of unforgiveness, these feelings, these emotions, these are powerful. These are incredibly powerful. And the combination of our sin nature and what is happening inside of us in our spirits and how our spirit is being influenced by the God of this world, Satan, it is through our sin nature and through the father of lies, the great deceiver, that we can live our life battling with these thoughts, feelings and emotions which are unpure, un unhealthy. They can be destructive. They can be very dark. They can lead us to do things that we don't want to do. They can lead to, the, they can lead to people committing adultery. They can lead to people really hurting other people. They can lead to people taking their own life. They can lead to absolute devastation in the world. And this is the current state of the world. When people are living in sin, following their sin nature, separated from God, not having any faith, not having a relationship with Jesus, therefore not having a, an open heart to receive Jesus and to receive the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit through the gift of salvation by the grace of God. For, for people that know me, people that may be watching this or will watch this, that that have been seeing some of my videos potentially and seeing how... how how much Paul Rook has changed in this last two and a half years. Yeah, Jesus Christ has changed me. I've been transformed. I'm a, I'm a new creation in Christ. It is not I that live. It is, it is he that lives in me. I'm, I'm the hands and feet of Jesus. And, and I desire each day to become more and more like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, living with the heart, the heart of the Father and the mind of Christ, being filled with the Holy Spirit and being led, guided by the Holy Spirit. And now... What I can say is, this is, some, this is a really interesting experience that I have. That I can be out and about, I can be walking, and then, like, all of a sudden, my eyes will, will just basically move, and they'll, and they'll be looking directly at, for instance, a, like a woman who's walking away from me, for instance, and my eyes will be looking at her bum. And I used to experience that before I gave my life to Jesus. But before I gave my life to Jesus, when my eyes would look at someone else whilst in a relationship, and that kind of, the lust, the kind of lustful feeling would sometimes, in my mind and in, in, in my, the inside of me would, would kind of kick in because of my sin nature, before Christ, before the Holy Spirit. Now, on these, what are incredibly rare times where my eyes suddenly just look at, um, someone of the opposite sex, their bum, or maybe their their like their their breast area, for instance. Whereas before, the the lustful desire may have may have kind of kicked in, and just thoughts and manifestations or whatever or not. Now, 
I just look away. I'm, it's this, it's this, it's no, the power of the Holy Spirit. So you've still got, I've got, there's still my sin nature that's kind of still trying to work to, to draw me to, to kind of lust after, say, an attractive lady. But the power of the Holy Spirit means that if my eyes do lock onto um, a woman and, and a part of her body that is a boobs or a bum or something, the Holy Spirit convicts me and I just look away straight away and there is zero lustful desire that kicks in. And that is the power of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit, we, when we're following the will of the Father, we are led by the Holy Spirit. We are living with and experiencing and enjoying life with the fruit of of the spirit, not the dictates of our sin nature, not following lustful desires. But this is so real for everyone. And I just want to, from my heart to your, yours, I just encourage you, if you haven't yet, open your heart to the truth that Jesus Christ loves you, that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life, that Jesus Christ died on the cross at Calvary for you, for your sins, so that all your sins all your sins, whatever you have done, whatever you have done in public, in private, God has seen every single thing you have ever done. He has seen every time you have ever lied. He's seen every time I've ever lied. He has seen, he knows every single time I lusted after someone. He has seen every single time you have lusted after someone. He has seen every single time you have said a white lie, every single time I've said a white lie. We all have a sin nature. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. But through our faith in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, through receiving Jesus into our life as our Lord and Saviour, because we can't win this battle of life on our own. We can't win the battle of our sin nature on our own. We can't win the battle of our mind on our own. We need Jesus and we need the Holy Spirit. We need faith. We need prayer. We need worship. And we need the word of God. We need the word of God. The word of God tells us, resist the devil and he flees from us. The word of God also tells us that we do not fight flesh and blood. We are not fighting flesh and blood when we are, when, when someone's coming against us, when someone's saying something to us, when someone's swearing, swearing to us, when someone is trying to make us angry, when someone is lying about us. It is, it is a sin living in them and they are currently being used as a vessel for the enemy, Satan, the devil, the Antichrist spirit. And there's been an increase in this last few months. I absolutely expect that you have been seeing an increase in what is spiritual warfare, in people coming against you. If you are in the truth, if you are in the truth of what's actually going on in the world, if you know and you understand now, maybe for the first time in your life, that evil is real, that Satan is real and that you have turned away from that. You've turned away from the darkness and that you are now focused on, on the truth. You are speaking the truth. You are standing in the truth. You are sharing the truth. And particularly if you have given your life to Jesus and you are looking to walk with Jesus, you are, you are reading the Bible, you are praying, you are worshipping. And I fully expect the warfare that you've, been, that you've been going through, both in your own mind, with your own flesh, with your own sin nature, desperately trying to keep you separated from God, from the word of God, but also spiritual warfare that would have been coming at you from other people. Just like it has for me in this last two or three weeks, there's been an increase in intensity. I'm not used to being sworn at, but I've been getting sworn at, but it's not the person or it's not the people, it's not them. They don't hate me. The people that have been coming against you don't hate you. It is the spirit that is in them hates the spirit that is in you. This is a spiritual battle. We are flesh and blood and we are weak. Our, our flesh is weak and our sin nature is powerful and the forces of darkness and evil are powerful, but by the blood of Jesus and by our faith in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we can put to bed, we can put to death the dictates of our sin nature that leads us to lust after others. So let me just give you, let me just give you um, a story, an example. So let's take, for instance, talking about lust. 
Let's take, for instance, a man like me, and if you're watching this and you're male, like, like me and all the males watching, like all of us watching, we all have a sin nature. So let's, let's for instance, think about a man who is uh, married, long-term married and has got children. And this man ends up working at someone else's house because of the skills that they have. They end up working within the house and, um, and they end up working there for, for maybe, maybe like two years. So over two years, they're, they're working within that house. And that house that they are working within, it's, it's, a, it's a family home and it's a, it's a married couple. So you've got a married man that is married and got children. And you've got another home where there's a husband and wife and children. And there's a, and there's a big age gap. So if, say, for instance, there's a 20 year age gap. So the, the, the woman of the house where the man is working is say around 20 years younger than the man. So over a two year period, and say for instance, the, the lady, the, the married woman, in the family home, say, say that woman is, is an attractive lady. So it's, you, you, it's someone that you, you could look at, whether you're male or female, and say, you know, that's, that's an attractive lady. So, over that two-year period of that man working in the home of that family with, the, with about a 20-year age difference, and say, for instance, this man isn't doesn't have faith at all is maybe you just maybe they describe themselves as like atheist you know just deny the existence of god completely and just deny anything about the holy bible that there's no truth in it so this person is living they, they are living with their sin nature which we all have they are in total denial of god and jesus and so their spirit we all have a spirit their spirit is wide open to be used and influenced by the God of this world, Satan, the father of lies, the great deceiver, the thief that comes to steal, kill and destroy. So over that two year period, would you say or would you expect that potentially over that two year period, that man who's working in that family home and potentially seeing the that the wife of that family home quite a lot of quite a lot of times because maybe for instance the the wife is maybe maybe works from home for instance so isn't out and about and maybe the the husband works away or works each day and commutes for instance so so the husband isn't typically at home would you say that there is a potential for that man that's working in that home over two years regularly, like each week, pretty much each week, would you say that there is a potential that that man may have had, may have lusted after that woman who's 20 years younger than him that's very attractive? From personal experience, knowing the power of our sin nature without us realising that we have a sin nature. From personal experience, knowing lust and experiencing lust. then in my heart, I would say that that man would have absolutely have had lust, sexual desires for that attractive woman that is 20 years younger that he's seen most days. And from personal experience, 
I would say, or I would expect that that man wouldn't have just had lustful sexual desires, but that they would have acted on them. So obviously acting on them, as I mentioned earlier, could be either through fantasizing or through actually doing something physically with that person. So whichever path that man in this story that I'm sharing, whichever path that man may have taken, for instance, whether it was pure lustful sexual desires and that led to fantasizing, or it was in the, in the flesh, actual something happened. As Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 26, 28, but I say, anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So that man, that man that was married has, I would expect in this story that I've shared, have committed adultery in his heart. But of course, we've got to remember that this man in, in this story that I've shared has absolutely no faith at all. But this person like you and me, has the same battle with our sin nature. The difference being, for instance, maybe with yourself, if you yourself have given your life to Jesus, if you have surrendered your life to Jesus, and that if you are being led by the Holy Spirit, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, like myself, then the difference, say, between yourself and this man that I've just described is that, yes, you still have a sin nature, but the power of the Holy Spirit that has joined with your spirit means that you are no longer following the dictates of your sin nature and you resist the devil and he flees from you. So the thief that comes to steal, kill and destroy, the, the enemy, the father of lies that wants to tempt this man, for instance, into taking those lustful desires further, those, you as a born again follower of Jesus, you are being led and guided by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray, I pray in the name of Jesus that what I've shared speaks to different people because I've shared what I've shared because of how real, how real this battle is. The battle of our sin nature, the battle of our mind. We can only win the battle, the battle for our soul, the battle for our life, the, the battle for our, our life, our joy. The enemy wants to steal our joy. But our Father in heaven, who has chosen you to be free, and who the sun sets free is free indeed. He wants you and me to live with the fruit of the Spirit. He wants us to live with love, with joy, with peace, with patience, with kindness, with goodness, with faithfulness, with gentleness, with self-control. The Lord... What the Lord is doing, what, what we are experiencing in the world in this last two years, and it's going to continue. Bef up until two years ago, everyone, we, nothing's changed. We all still have a sin nature. We all still have a spirit. Satan was two years ago, the God of this world. Satan is currently the God of this world.
So nothing's changed with our sin nature and the power of our sin nature and, uh, and, the, and the desires of Satan. But two years ago, two years ago, I would say most people in the world were still living in sin, following with the dictates of their sin nature, because either people had no relationship with Jesus at all, no faith at all, or maybe they were following some other man-made God, some a false idol, a false God, so they weren't in relationship with Jesus. But then even for Christians who had been going to church on a Sunday, reading the Bible, maybe listening to some hymns, some worship songs, doing a few prayers now and again. It's shown, the last 18 months has shown that most Christians seem to still be living in the world. Yet, as the Bible tells us, we are in the world, but not of the world. This world is fallen. But two years ago, everything was just kind of kept behind closed doors. So if people said they were a Christian, but they weren't really living, they weren't really following and being led by the Holy Spirit and they were still battling with sin, porn, lustful desires, but they went to church on a Sunday and they maybe said the prayers and maybe repented then, and that was, that was them. What God is doing in the world in this last 18 months, two years, coming up, it's going to, going to be coming up to two years. Through everything that's going on, this is his divine plan. This is God's divine plan to expose evil, to expose humanity to evil, so people can face into and accept that evil is real. And once the scales have fallen from your eyes, the veil's been lifted, you can see through the lies and the deception and you start to understand and realise some of the depth of darkness and evil, it isn't something I would necessarily recommend people go to. All I would say at this moment now is if maybe it's only in this last 18 months you've faced into evil. You've faced into the reality of, of evil. Let me just say that evil, evil that comes through sin, that comes through the love of money, which is the root of all evil, evil... Evil that comes from the influences of Satan. It is absolutely sick. Absolutely sick. Literally evil personified. But I pray for everyone that in the name of Jesus, that the scales have fallen from your eyes now. Father, I ask, Father, Father, I ask that you just give everyone the eyes to see, the ears to hear, Father. Fill everyone with your Holy Spirit now. Everyone that's watching, listening under the sound of my voice, Father, may the scales fall from their eyes, the veil be lifted if you haven't done already, Father. May the Holy Spirit fill them now. May they never be deceived by man again. May they, from the bottom of their heart, with all their heart, receive Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. You are loved by God. God loves you and God wants you to be in relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. He wants you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He wants you to put to death the dictates of your sin nature. He wants you to say, I resist the devil and he flees from me. He wants you to say, I am a child of God. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He wants you to say, God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. This is God's desire for you. In the Bible, it says God wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. But every person has the same battle without necessarily realising the battle with their sin nature and the battle with the God of this world, Satan. But praise the Lord, hallelujah, when we receive Jesus with all our heart, when we receive him into our life as our Lord and Saviour, and we receive the Holy Spirit, we are born again, baptised by the Holy Spirit. we children of God. I declare and decree you have been chosen to be free and who the sun sets free is free indeed. You are chosen and not forsaken. God doesn't want you living your life, the rest of your life, with the same battles with your mental health, with your physical health, 
God wants you to be in relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. God wants you to know that Jesus is our healer. God wants you to know that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So I just pray, I just pray that this message, what I've shared from my heart is, is, is spoke to people. Thank you for, Penny, for what you've shared there, that unfortunately true born again, strong Christians still fall into sin as I have known, especially in these times, we must be on our guard. Absolutely, thank you, Sister Penny. So this is where, so for in, for in two years, because God is revealing the sins of the world, God is revealing to each and every person, are you going to accept that evil is real? Are you going to accept it or are you going to keep your blinkers on? Are you going to continue living self-centeredly? Are you, are you going to continue living selflessly and just kind of do what you're told to do, not face into what's going on around the world and just you're just going to keep following, you're just going to keep complying because as long as you are okay, as long as your little bubble is okay for you and your family and you've got your job, you've got your security, you've got your home, you've got your cars, you've got your Netflix, you've got your Amazon, you've got your, you've got your Morrison shop or your... Waitrose shop or whatever it is, that as long as you're all right, you're not bothered what's going on in the world. You don't care. You're not, you, you're not, you don't have a heart for other people. You don't care that there's millions and millions of people that are suffering now with their mental health that weren't suffering 18 months ago, that you don't really think about the millions of people that haven't had treatments and cancer treatments when they should have done. Your, your heart isn't currently there where the people that have taken their own lives and, and then the families that they've left behind, you don't care about that devastation because as long as you're doing your bit, as long as you're following what you've been told to do, as long as you are doing your bit, then you're not going to rock the boat, you're not going to challenge anything, you're not going to question anything, you're just going to continue in your bubble. But what God is doing, God is going to pop. He is popping people's bubbles, people's bubbles of illusion. He is popping them, he is popping, he is he is exposing, he is shining light onto people's darkness. He is shining light onto people's sins. He is shining light. He is convicting people through his spirit. The Lord is convicting people through his spirit. People who have been committing sin, people who have been living in sin, people that have been lying, people that have been deceiving, people that have been doing wrong against children, people who, people who haven't been looking after children in the right way, people who have been, who have been doing things for themselves and not thinking about others, people who haven't been following the will of the Father. Sometimes for some people, many people maybe, people that are in my life that have, that have sworn to me, they, they are living, denying God and denying Jesus, living in total denial of our Father in heaven who formed them, who created them, who knitted them together, who loves them, who will never leave them nor forsake them, who has numbered every hair on their head, who, whose thoughts will outnumber the grains of sand on the seashore. So when people are living in, this is, but this is where the grace of God comes in. The grace of God is profound. The grace of God, because God knows and sees everything. He knows when people are living in sin. He knows when people are choosing to live in sin. He knows when people are choosing to say from their mouth that, that God isn't real, that Jesus isn't real. He knows it. God sees every single time someone swears at another person. He sees every time someone threatens to punch another person. God sees every single thing, yet his grace, his grace upon every single person through the blood of Jesus, through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ, through the surrender of Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary by his blood, our sins are forgiven. God's mercy, God's grace, God's agape love, his incomprehensible love is beyond comprehension. His patience, how much patience is God showing to people in this last 18 months? God is, God is like shaking <laughs> God is shaking the world. God is shaking people. God is, even though in mainstream media, which people follow, and in, even in government briefings and government documents, more and more truth is coming out. Yet people are, people are still keeping the blinkers on. People are still living in sin. People are still living self-centeredly. People are still living selfishly. People are still continuing to, to deny that there's anything going on because of, and they've got pride. Pride. That barrier of pride is so strong. My word. Pride. Lust. Living in sin. Living separated from God. Outside of the will of God. The will of God. The plan. The Lord has plans for your life. Plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Jesus Christ. 
died for you on the cross at Calvary. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Thank you for watching this. God bless you all. Absolutely, Sister Adele. Our Father, he is purifying each and every one of us. We all need Jesus. We all need to surrender. We all need to be free. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. There is no height nor depth, nor any other creature, not even the powers of hell can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. May the Holy Spirit be upon you. May you be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you need to repent, may the Holy Spirit convict you to repent of your sins from the bottom of your heart. If you've been living in sin, if you've been denying God, denying Jesus, following the dictates of your sin nature, if perhaps you have been blaming other people for the things going on in your life rather than taking responsibility. May the Lord convict you in the spirit to, to face into, to accept, to take responsibility for your sins, for when you have done things that have caused harm or damage to other people in any way. And may you turn to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. He stands at the door and knocks. And if you open the door, he'll come in, he'll sit down and he'll have a meal with you and a meal with him. People may plan all kinds of things. And this includes non-believers. People may plan all kinds of things. But the Lord's will is going to be done. And remember, Satan, the God of this world, who is desperate, desperate to keep you held back from walking in the calling that you have received. There is a calling upon your life. Satan, remember, is the accuser. The accuser of the brethren, the deceiver, the father of lies. What Satan wants you to do, Satan wants you to keep being reminded, wants to keep reminding you of your past, of how you used to be. And that is either through, through getting in, trying to get into your mind directly or through other people. Satan will be using other people to try and remind you of your past, of how you used to be, how you were before you received Jesus, how you were when you lived in sin, following the dictates of your sin nature. This is what the accuser wants to do. The accuser wants you to worry about the future. The accuser wants you to live in fear. The, the accuser wants you to think that God isn't going to answer your prayers or when God did speak to you that, no, it wasn't really God and God isn't a man of his word. Well, God is a man of his word. His promises are yes and amen. And even when we don't see it, God is working. Even when we don't feel it, God is working. God is the way maker. He is the light in the darkness. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He is the light of the world, the resurrection and the life. Our strength comes through Jesus. Our strength comes from Jesus. I'm going to finish, I'm going to finish in a prayer, a prayer for you. Heavenly Father, I lift up to you now those who are listening to these words under the sound of my voice. Father, I pray that if you haven't yet lifted the veil and the scales haven't yet fallen from their eyes, that by hearing these words, they will be given the eyes to see and the ears to hear. I declare and decree you have been chosen to be free and who the sun sets free is free indeed. I can pray for anything and if I have faith, I will receive it. Before God made the world, he loved you and chose you in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. He saw you before you were born. Every day of your life was recorded in his book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. He knew you before he formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, he set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. You didn't choose Christ. Christ chose you.
Jesus Christ appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that your Father in heaven will give you whatever you ask for using the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was pierced for your rebellion, crushed for your sins, beaten so you could be whole, and whipped so you could be healed. You will praise him, for you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are his works, and that your soul knows very well. May you give all glory to your Father, as you are able, through his mighty power at work within you, to accomplish infinitely more than you might ask or think. You are chosen. You are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. He goes before you and follows you. He places his hand of blessing on your head. Because you have faith and don't doubt, you can do things like Jesus did and much more. You can even say to a mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. You can pray for anything and as you have faith, you will receive it. May you thank your father in heaven that he came to save you. May you trust in him and not be afraid. He is your strength and your song. He has given you victory. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. He arms you with strength and he makes your way perfect. For you can do everything through Christ who gives you strength. His grace is all you need. His power works best in your weakness. May you be glad to boast about your weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through you. May you take pleasure in your weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions and troubles that you suffer for Christ. For when you are weak, then he is strong. You are strong and courageous. You are not afraid and you do not panic before your enemies. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. You are not afraid, for he is with you. You are not discouraged, for he is your God. He strengthens you and helps you. He holds you up with his victorious right hand. You trust in the Lord and you find new strength. You soar high on wings like eagles. You run and don't grow weary. You walk and don't faint. You continually seek to understand the incredible greatness of his power for you who believes in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honour at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Father, your word tells me that as your chosen people, my brothers and sisters hearing these words will not be touched. Your prophets are not hurt. You are strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. You put on all of God's armour so that you are able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For you are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, may you put on every piece of God's armour so that you are able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will still be standing firm. May you stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armour of God's righteousness. For shoes, may you put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, may you hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. May you put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. 
May you be led to pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. May you stay and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. You know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. You wait patiently for the Lord. You are brave and courageous. Yes, you wait patiently for the Lord. The Lord has rescued you from your enemies and redeemed you from your foes. You love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. The Lord is your strength and shield. You trust him with all your heart. He helps you and your heart is filled with joy. You burst out in songs of thanksgiving. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Christ has made his home in your heart as you trust in him. Your roots are growing down into his love and they keep you strong, Penny. You live in the shelter of the Most High and you find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is your refuge, your place of safety. He is your God and you trust him. For he rescues you from every trap and protects you from deadly disease. He covers you with his feathers. He shelters you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armour and protection. You are not afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. You do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils do not touch you. You just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. As you make the Lord your refuge, as you make the Most High your shelter, no evil conquers you. No plague comes near your home. Our Father orders his angels to protect you wherever you go. They hold you up with their hands so you don't even hurt your foot on a stone. You trample upon lions and cobras. You crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says he will rescue you because you love him. He will protect you as you trust in his name. When you call on him, he answers. He is with you in trouble. He rescues and honours you. He will reward you with a long life and give you his salvation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray all this in faith. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. I just need to go to the toilet. So I'll, um, I'm going to stay on this live. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For the Holy Spirit working upon all people. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Remember that people may plan all kinds of things. But the Lord's will is going to be done. And the grace of God. The grace of God upon your life and upon my life, particularly on the lives of people that deny God and deny Jesus. The grace is quite incomprehensible because in your unfaithfulness, God will remain and has always remained faithful. The Lord is close to the broken hearted and he saves those that are crushed in spirit. Do not worry about anything but instead through prayer and petition bring your request to the to the lord and give thanks for everything because every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the father and there is no height nor depth nor any other creature that will be able to separate you jim from the love of god that is in christ jesus our Lord, peace be still, peace be still. I say to Satan now, if Satan has been ruling your life 
along with your sin nature, I say to Satan now, it is finished. It ends. Satan, get behind thee. Everyone that is watching, listening under the sound of my voice has been chosen to be free and who the Son sets free is free indeed. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming on. Know that you coming on to watch this video, to listen, to hear these words, to hear these prayers, to hear this message that I've shared about lust. Know that it was God's will and God's plan, God's divine plan that you'd be listening to this message now and hearing these words at this moment in your life. Nothing is by chance. Nothing is a coincidence. This is a God incident for you to know that Jesus Christ loves you and Jesus Christ died on the cross for you for all your sins. Remember, God has seen every sin that we have ever committed. He has seen when we have lusted, when we've had sexual desires for someone else, when we've been in, in a relationship. He has seen everything. He knows our heart. He knows our motives. He knows, he knows when we have lied. He knows when we have lied. He has seen everything everything that we've done in public, behind closed doors and in private. He has seen everything. Every single thing. And he'll continue to see every single thing as well. God knows and has seen when we have made decisions in our life, when we have chosen to act in a certain way, or in some cases to not act, that have led to the harm of other people. God has seen everything that has gone on behind closed doors in the last 18 months, since schools went on lockdown and children were at home and the parents, the mums, dads, or the people in a partnership were, were doing whatever they were doing and whether they were whether they had time or whether they were spending time looking after their children or not, whatever's happened, God has seen it. God has seen, God has seen everything that's happened. I was recently speaking to an optician and um, this optician was saying that it's, this is actually, it's a pandemic. It's a pandemic of children's eyesight. He said, no, nearly pretty much every child that comes in for an eye test is now diagnosed with, um, with being short-sighted. And he said it's because of devices. He said it's because they're spending far, much long, far, more, far more time now than they ever used to be looking at devices, screens, phones, iPads. He said it's a pandemic. It's a pandemic of children's eyesight. And it's predicted, he was saying, in I don't know how many years, I don't know if he said 10, 20 years, that two-thirds of children or three-quarters of children, they'll all be wearing glasses. That was the optician's prediction. That's quite a grim prediction. If you've got children, if you're watching this, if you've got children, then perhaps they have spent more time in this last 18 months on devices, potentially, for whatever reason. And um, God wants you to know he knows and sees all things and he knows that when children's eyesights have been damaged and um, I, when children's eyesights have degraded because they've, spending, they've been spending a considerable amount of time looking at, um, looking at a small screen, whether in a kind of brightly lit environment or a dinner lit environment. And God knows, God has seen every single piece of content on YouTube that children have seen, of children of any age has seen what, what children have seen, whether it's on kids' YouTube, whether it's on adult YouTube, God has seen, God has seen everything. He's seen everything. God has seen everything.
He sees everything. Jesus loves you. May the Holy Spirit be upon you now. mentioned about YouTube so there's youtube.com the main YouTube there's YouTube kids there's there's obviously an incredible wealth and depth of content and a variety of content on YouTube and what I mentioned before that God has seen every piece of content on YouTube that that anyone of any age has ever watched and God knows their thoughts their feelings as they as they watch that that video that content and um, I suppose just to give you, just just to give you a bit of a, a a flavor or a bit of an insight, if you're not aware, or maybe you've got children yourself, and maybe you're not too sure what what they've been watching, or maybe what they've watched in the past on on YouTube, because maybe you just leave them to to watch whatever they watch, and maybe you've got some parental controls in place, so you think that that's fine, and you just trust that what your children are looking at is um, is okay for them to be looking at. Well, I'll just show you. I just want to show you some, um, just a few, a few little insights of, of the kind of videos, the, the kind of video content that's on YouTube that, that children could be watching, that maybe your children have been watching or have been watching in the past or have been watching lately. Because this is, I'm presuming that all this content here um, is, um, will still, you know, all these videos will still be on. We'll still be on here. So we've got, um, so this is like, these are the kind of videos that are on, that are on YouTube that children could be watching. Twenty two million views. Barbie Kids TV. Twenty two million views. To think that so many parents think that Halloween is innocent when it's actually celebrating evil. 64 million views. 33 million views. A snake climbing over, or what looks like a snake climbing over someone's body. A huge spider climbing over someone, a little child that's asleep. 63 million views. Just think that there's children out there in the world that have been watching these videos, watching this content.
Brent Rivera, 74 million views. Wow. Trapped. Trapped inside. Trapped inside somewhere. Hypnotized. Some people say it's just the world we live in. Well, I don't know about you, but this isn't a world that, um, that I want to bring my kids up in, my children, my three precious, beautiful daughters. The first two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Number two, love thy neighbour. We're called in the Bible to pray for our enemies. To pray for them. To ask God to bless them. To intercede on their behalf and to give thanks for them because... Our enemies in the flesh, they are just being led by their sin nature, their powerful sin nature that we all have, and also by the God of this world, Satan, the father of lies, the accuser. And what you may have found if you have watching this, and in this last few months, if you've been speaking the truth in in your life, with, in your family circumstances, with friends, with people that you're connected to on Facebook, if you've been speaking the truth, because you've come into the truth of what's going on in the world and you know the truth about evil, so you've been speaking the truth, then it's very likely you would have been having people coming at you, but in particular, even more in this last month or so, in the month of December, because there is an intensification of the spiritual battle, because the dam is going to break. As more and more people are awakening to evil, as more and more people are stepping away from that wide path of sin that leads to death, as more and more people are giving their life to Jesus, as more and more people are living in the light, as more and more people are being led by the Holy Spirit, as more and more people are praying and interceding for their loved ones, the dam is going to break. But the thing is, Satan, Satan is desperate. Satan is so, so, so desperate to keep those people who haven't yet had the veil lifted, who haven't yet had the scales fall from their eyes. Satan is so desperate to keep people in bondage, in chains of bondage. But it is God's will. We are saved by the grace of God. We are saved by the grace of God. Christ chose me. I didn't choose Christ. I didn't choose to give my life to Jesus. I was, cho I, I was chosen by the will of God. We are chosen. So when the Bible, it says, people may plan all kinds of things. It's like those that, are, those that are planning and committing what they are committing at the moment, the evil, the sickening evil of this world. They've been planning for years and years and years. And they are, they are, they are committing evil acts. We are all living in and through evil, evil, evil acts. But... The Lord looks down from heaven and he scoffs, he laughs because people may plan all kinds of things, but the Lord's will is going to be done. So if you ask any born again follower of Jesus who used to be a atheist, an absolute atheist, there's no God, I don't have any faith, no belief in God, in Jesus whatsoever. If you ask any born again believer who used to be like that, and if you ask them when you were, when you were um, atheist, when you were living as an atheist, were you planning 
to give your life to Jesus? So for if you're watching this now and, and you're atheist and you say that you're an atheist, you don't believe in God, you don't, you don't have any faith at all, if that's where, that's where you're currently at, then of course, at this moment in your life, you're not planning to give your life to Jesus. You're not planning to surrender your life to Jesus because if you were planning to give your life to Jesus, you wouldn't see yourself as an atheist. You would be speaking to someone who is a born again follower of Jesus like myself and saying, I've seen the light. I realise now, Paul, that you've not been lying for 18 months you've just been telling the truth but I just didn't want to face into it I didn't want to accept it I didn't want to believe the reality that evil is real but but now I want to be set free I want to be set free from the, my mental health challenges from my battles I want to be set free from from feeling hopeless or helpless or feeling like feeling condemned for things that have happened in my past I don't want to be living like this I, I don't want to be having sleepless nights I want to lie down and rest in peace I want to have your peace Paul and, it, and this is the peace that I have, is a peace of God which surpasses all understanding, that guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It's, it's, it's a gift from God, and it only comes through our relationship with Jesus. We have all been lied to and we've all been deceived. If you're watching this now and you're an atheist, and you see yourself as an atheist, we, every one of us, you, your family, your mum, your dad, your, your grandma, granddad, through all the generations, we have all been lied to. We have all been deceived throughout our entire life. We, we've been lied to about men, supposedly having landed on the moon. Men haven't landed on the moon. We've been deceived. Humanity has been deceived. Probably the biggest one, one of the biggest ones, that, that humans, we've been, <laughs> we're told that we evolved from an ape in Africa. And that the world came about because of the Big Bang. It's a lie from the pit of hell. God created the heavens and the earth. He created you. He knitted you together. He loves you. He knows when you stand up and when you sit down. Everyone that's watching and listening to this video now, God planned for you to be listening to these words now before he created the heavens and the earth. You have been chosen to be free and who the sun sets free is free indeed. There is no height nor depth nor any other creature that will be able to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. I shut the mouth and ears of Satan now because for 18 months, Satan has been using people who are atheists and non-believers to try and get me in trouble, to report me, to try and to get angry about me, to swear at me, to, to, to mock me, to ridicule me. But it's not them. It's not them. It's a spirit inside of them. They just need Jesus and the Holy Spirit because when you have Jesus in your life and you have the Holy Spirit, you have the fruit of the Spirit. You're not, you're not mocking, you're not slandering people, you're not getting angry when people are sharing the truth because it's the Spirit that is in you. It's the Spirit that has been inside of people that have, that have hated the truth that I've been sharing because the Spirit in them has hated the Spirit in me. It's why I've had people swearing at me. I've had people swearing at me and... And, and threatening to, to hit me, to punch me. But it's not them. It's the spirit in them. It's the spirit in them. It's, it's the antichrist spirit in them because Satan is desperate. Satan is desperate to keep people living in fear, living in bondage, be, live, believing the lies of Satan. The first lie of Satan, God isn't real. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Number two, oh, well, if God is real, then God doesn't really love you because why did that happen to you? Why did that happen to you in your life? Yes, God loves you. It is agape love. It's incomprehensible love. He formed you. He created you. He knitted you together. He numbered every hair on your head. He knows what you're going to say before you've even said it. He planned for you to be listening to the, this message right now. This is no accident. This is no coincidence. He is reaching in. He is reaching hearts and minds right now through his Holy Spirit. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those that are crushed in spirit. The Lord is close to the broken heart and saves those that are crushed in spirit. He loves you. God loves you. But Satan, oh, Satan is under our feet. The father of lies, the great deceiver, the God of this world. The God of this world. He's defeated. He's finished. He's done. The liar, the deceiver. You know the third lie of Satan? So along with, oh, Oh, yeah, whispering, whispering. No, God isn't real. No, God isn't real. No, lie from the pit of hell. Oh, 
If God is real, God doesn't love you. No, because why did that happen to you? Why did that happen to you? Why was I sexually abused when I was 10? Why did, why did God allow me to be groomed for three years between the ages of 12 to 15? Because that's all part of my story, my journey. And Romans 8, 28 says, God works in all things for good. For those that love God and those that live according to his purpose for them. All things, the good, the bad. Why do we have bad things going on in our life? We live in a fallen world. Most people around us, most people around me haven't yet given their life to Jesus. Satan is using people in my life around me to come against me, to attack me. Satan has used people to report me to the police and to social services to, and for social services to refer me to the mental health team. That's, this is the world we live in. We live in a fallen world. Most people two years ago didn't think that evil existed. Yes, evil is real. Evil is real. Evil is more evil than you can possibly want to imagine. I don't recommend anyone goes down to fully understand the depth of evil in this world. Let me just say, there are 21 million posts on Facebook that use the hashtag save our children. So for all those people thinking that they are living for other people and they're doing what they're doing for other people by complying and following, well, my question to them would be, what do you think about why there could be 21 million posts on Facebook with the hashtag save our children. What happens to all the children that go missing each year? Evil is, is beyond human comprehension. I'm only able to comprehend the evils that have taken place, the evil that men and women have committed often to children, I am only able to comprehend it, having come to learn and realize that we all have a sin nature and our sin nature is opposed to God's laws. Our sin nature wants us to live in sin. We have a sin nature, we have a spirit and when we are not in relationship with Jesus, our spirit is wide open to be used by Satan, the God of this world, the father of lies, the thief that comes to steal, kill and destroy. And then when you add into that, the love of money, which is the root of all evil, you can then start to just about understand where this evil of the world comes from. Because the people that are, are currently dictating what goes on in the world and what, what you're meant to do or say or what you're meant to follow, they have more money than what you can comprehend. The families, the individuals, the families, billionaires, trillionaires, more money than what you can comprehend. The love of money is the root of all evil. They all need Jesus. They all need deliverance. They all need deliverance. They all need Jesus because those that are at the, the top of the, the pyramid, you might want to say, currently, Thank you. Thank you, FJ. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Brother Gary. God bless you all. Thank you, Penny, for what you've been sharing. God bless you. God bless you, Ian. Thank you for watching. God bless you, Bet. God bless you. You've been chosen to be free. God bless you, Lisa. You've been chosen to be free. Jesus loves you all. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name. So to go back, Gary, I've just seen your comment there. To go back to the status, I've been taught, I was talking about lust. I was talking about lust and uh, having sexual desire for other people. So say whether you're in a relationship or not, but particularly for people that are in a relationship, when you lust after others, you have a sexual desire for others. And it's a, and it's a very real, it's a very powerful force that's from within. And, um, and it can lead people to, to fantasize. It can lead people to, it can lead people to um, commit adultery. It can lead people to do things which lead to have negative consequences. So it's been... Um, but a significant message. We don't, people don't normally talk about lust, but it's very real. Very real. God bless you, Peter. God bless you, Brother Peter. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you all. God bless you, Jim. God bless you, Penny. God bless you, Vera. God bless you, Claire. God bless you, Billy. God bless you, Lisa Jane. God bless you, Margaret. God bless you, Annette. God bless you, Craig. God bless you, Adele. God bless you, Victoria. God bless you, Jules. 
God bless you, Tina. God bless you, Harper. God bless you, Nikki. God bless you, Maria. God bless you, Sue. God bless you, Chris. God bless you all. God bless you, Stephen. God bless you, Teresa. God bless you. I'm just going to finish in, I'm just going to finish in prayer for everyone watching this. Praise the name of the Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for this message. Father, I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that everyone that you have brought onto this Facebook Live or that will watch this, this video at some stage in the future, that they not only have been chosen to be free and who the sun sets free is free indeed, Father, that, but you have been lifting the veil and scales have been falling from people's eyes, Father, because you are setting the captives free. Thank you, Father, for setting the captives free. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Father, we are born with a sin nature. We have all sinned. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. But we thank you, we praise you for your grace and your mercy upon our lives. I thank you and I praise you, Father, that through your Holy Spirit, what you are doing in this last 18 months and what you are doing more and more as these days and weeks go on in December 2021, you are convicting people. You are convicting people in their hearts for when they have sinned when they have sinned, when, when they have lived self-centeredly, Father. Thank you for the conviction that is coming about over people's hearts. Thank you for lifting the veil. Thank you for setting the captives free, Father. Thank you that you are for us, not against us. Father, in your word, 1 Timothy 2, the word of God says, the Apostle Paul, he wrote, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people, to ask God to help them, to intercede on their behalf and to give thanks for them. So, Father, I'm praying for all people now. I'm praying for all people that are watching, listening to this now under the sound of my voice, everyone that has ever watched and listened, any messages that I've shared, Father, to glorify you and to talk about our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, to expose darkness and sin. Father, everything that I've done, I just ask you to bless all people. Father, I ask you to help those who need help in, all those who aren't yet in relationship with you, Father. I'm interceding on behalf of everyone. And Father, I just give you thanks. I give you thanks for everyone. I give you thanks for their life. I thank you, Father, that through all their life, through their ups, their downs, their trials, their tribulations, through their dark valleys, through the moments when people have been close to taking their own lives, Father, that you have been there, Father. It is your will. It is your plan that they are still here today, Father. Your divine plan, your will, your grace, your mercy upon each and every one of our lives, Father, why we are still here today. It is your breath that is in our lungs. You formed us, you created us, you knitted us together. Together, Father, you are God Almighty. Our help comes from the creator of the heavens and the earth, Father. You are for us, not against us. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I'm asking you now for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit. An outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon everyone that is watching, listening, and not all those that you've been that have been connected with this ministry that have been watching me. Father, for those that have mocked me, those that have ridiculed me, those that have lied about me, those that have slandered me, those that have sworn against me, those that have said um, condescending words, Father. Just I ask you to bless all people. May the Holy Spirit come upon them now, Father. May you lift the veil, Father. I smash. In the name of Jesus, with the authority that you give me in the heavenly realms, Father, I smash every single chain of bondage in their life now. Every single strong man, I speak into their lives now, Father. I just lift them up. I lift them up in prayer, Father. I plead and declare and decree the blood of Jesus over their life, Father. Set the captives free, Father. Set the captives free. The spirit of fear, Father, I speak to the spirit of fear now and I command the spirit of fear to leave the children of God now in the name of Jesus, never to return again, Father, because you haven't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and of a sound mind. So we just thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the son of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that you lived on earth and you shone light into the darkness because you came into this fallen world and people, you were hated by the world. Yes, you were hated by the world because people couldn't stand the light. They didn't want to face into their sin nature. So Father, no, as we live as followers of Jesus, born again, set free in Christ, Father, when the world hates us, we know that we are doing your work. We know that we are being the hands and feet of you, Jesus, because the world doesn't want to accept the truth and reality of their sins, of their sin nature. 
Satan wants to keep them bound up, but Father, I declare and decree, Satan is under our feet. Yes, you have made a table for us, for each and every one of us in the presence of our enemies, Father. But praise the Lord, hallelujah, because greater is a spirit that is in us than the spirit that is in the world. We give you all the glory, all the praise and all the honor, Father, for every chain breaks in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus. Father, I shut the mouth and ears of Satan now. Father, if there are any schemes and any strategies of Satan in any way try, trying to work in this place, Father, I just speak to Satan now and I say it is finished you are under my feet. Satan, you father of lies, by the blood of Jesus, by the death, through the burial, and through the resurrection of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, death is defeated. Satan, you have lost your grip and your hold and your authority and your legal right over every single person that is watching and listening. Every single person watching, listening has been chosen to be free and who the sun sets free is free indeed. Father, rain down your Holy Spirit upon all people now, Father. May the fire of the Holy Ghost be coming down now upon all my brothers and sisters, all those listening, watching, all those that were coming onto this live who didn't have faith, who didn't realise that they are a child of God. Father, transform hearts and minds. Father, heal the brokenhearted. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those that are crushed in spirit. Father, give everyone a heart of flesh from a heart of stone. Father, melt their hearts, melt their hearts. Give them a heart of flesh from a heart of stone. Father, the religious spirit. Father, if anyone has been watching this, is listening now and they think it's about religion, Father, may they know that this is about a relationship with Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Religion, man-made religion is evil. The church is corrupt. Father, you are exposing the church for what it is. You've been exposing it for 18 months. It's corrupt. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Everything done in dark is being brought to light. As your word tells us, Father, everything done in dark is being brought to light. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. So, Father, thank you for the work you are doing in the hearts and minds of everyone. Because even when we don't see it, Father, you are working. Even when we don't hear, feel it, you are working. You are the miracle worker. You are the chain breaker. You are the way maker. You are the promise keeper. Your promises are yes and amen. Your word, the word of God, the Holy Bible is your word and you never lie, Father. Your promises are yes and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless all people, Father. Thank you for bringing people into tears of joy. Tears of joy to know that they are a child of God, that you love them your grace and mercy upon their life. For all those that have been living with no faith, denying you, Father, denying your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Set them free, Father. Set them free and set them on fire. Set them on fire with your Holy Spirit. Father, I'm declaring and decreeing now. I'm prophesying into people's lives that in 2022, everyone that has been watching this live, even just for a few moments, whether they're listening now or not, Father, in the spirit realm, as I take authority over all powers and principalities, I declare and decree, I prophesy into their lives now that in 2022, they are going to be on fire for our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Nothing is going to stop this move of God. Nothing is going to stop your revival. People may plan all kinds of things, but the Lord's will is going to be done. Father, for those that are watching, listening, that have been, that have been following the, the rules and the, following the world, following and listening and trusting and denying that there's anything evil or sinister going on, Father, those that have stood by and seen their, their parents, they've seen their parents take the, take the jab, and get the next job and get the booster job, Father. For all those that have stood by and just watched as loved ones have been jabbed and have stood there without saying anything, 
Father, forgive them. for They know not what they do. Father, I just ask you to set the captives free. Father, heal hearts and minds. Lead people into repentance through your Holy Spirit, through the conviction, through the conviction of your Holy Spirit, Father. Convict people of their sins so they turn, so they repent, so they confess that they are a sinner, that they have sinned. May everyone watching and listening this, may they, may they confess everything that, that has ever been done, that, that has been done in secret. Any, every time that people have lied, people that are in relationships, maybe they that have lied, Father, people that have lied to their loved ones, to their family members, to their children. Father, may, may 2022 become 2020 truth. I declare truth. I declare truth, transparency. And I declare people are being cleansed of their sins right now in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your divine will for humanity. Thank you. Thank you, Father, as, as your word tells us in Romans 8, 28, you work in all things. God works in all things for good, for those that love God and those that live according to his purpose for them. So I thank you and I praise you, Father, for everyone, everyone that is here, that is watching. Thank you, Father, for my life, for my entire family's life, every single, my family, my extended family, everyone that is connected to me. Thank you, Father, for your grace, your mercy and your agape love. Thank you for choosing me to be the first person in my entire family, generational history to be saved by the grace of God. Thank you, Father, for everything you are doing. Thank you for this ministry, Become Born Again. This is your ministry that you have bestowed upon me. This is a family ministry. I give you all the glory, all the praise and all the honour for what you are doing with this ministry and for everything to come in 2022. I just praise you, I worship you, I glorify you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is speaking now. My precious ones, you are mine. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I have seen every tear that you have ever shed. I have collected them in my bottle and those that sow with tears are going to reap with joy. Yes, you are going to reap with joy. I have seen your pain, your anguish. I have seen the times when you have felt helpless, when you have felt hopeless. I have seen it when you have been weeping. I have seen it when you've not been able to sleep at night. I have seen every dark place that you have ever been. And in those darkest places of your life, it has been I, the Lord, that has carried you. Yes, I have been with you throughout your entire life. I have brought you to this place now, this moment right now, hearing my words, because I am for you, not against you. You will come to see that I do work in all things for good, for those that love me and those that live according to my purpose for them. You are mine. The enemy has tried desperately to push you away from me. The enemy has desperately tried to attack you, to attack your thoughts, to push you more and more into sin. But you are mine and I have chosen you. And right now I am lifting you out of the miry clay and putting your feet on the solid rock, the rock of all ages. I am straightening out all your crooked paths. I am cleansing you. I am cleansing you with my blood. I am filling you to overflow with my spirit. I have put my spirit in you and greater is the spirit in you than the spirit that is in the world. My hand is mighty upon you and your family. 
I have chosen you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in my image. I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and of a sound mind. I have only just begun revealing myself to you. You have only just begun getting to understand and comprehend that your identity is in me and in me alone. You are going to see me work and move in your life that is going to bring you to tears. Yes, but your tears won't be of pain or of anguish or of turmoil. Your, your tears will be tears of joy because you are now knowing and understanding truly and fully that your identity is in me. And yes, your unforgiveness, the unforgiveness that you have lived with because of other people's actions and words towards you, those that have hurt you in your past, those that, those that have mistreated you, disrespected you, those that have led you to hurt yourself. I now give you my spirit for you to forgive, for you to see forgiveness, for you to have forgiveness in your heart, for you to break those chains, the chains of bondage, the chains of unforgiveness. You are mine and you deserve to live the rest of your days free, in total freedom, with the chains broken, the chains to your past, the chains of pains to your past. It is my will for your life that you are free, that you are set free from the bondage, the chains of the past. Your identity is in me, for I, the Lord, have spoken. Your identity is in me and in me alone. Your peace comes from me. The peace I give you is a gift the world cannot give. So do not let your heart be troubled. My peace surpasses all understanding. And it is going to guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Yes, in me. In me. In me. Peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. You are mine, for I, the Lord, have spoken. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my brothers and sisters. Thank you for their life and for everything to come. Matthew twenty one twenty two. For it is written, I can pray for anything, and if I have faith, I will receive it. Father, I pray all these things in faith, in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And all the saints say, Amen, Amen and Amen. God bless you all. Have a blessed, blessed day, evening. Have a peaceful night's sleep, wherever you are in the world. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you now and with you always. Agape, Paul. <laughs>